What you're looking at is a view of the ocean, and it would look beautiful if it wasn't simultaneously completely and utterly terrifying. There's no sea monsters or krakens or anything like that, it's literally just water. Yet for some reason, you can't help but stare in awe, and then immediately want to go back on land. This feeling is thalassophobia. Not fear of sharks, not even necessarily fear of drowning, it's fear of the deep. Fear of the sheer scale of nothingness. But why does something so calm feel so threatening to so many people? Did evolution put this fear in us for a reason? And is there any real threat still present today? On the surface, thalassophobia sounds very simple, a fear of the ocean. But that doesn't quite capture it. Most of us aren't terrified of beaches, or swimming pools, or the gentle sound of waves. What thalassophobia really targets is something deeper. It's the fear of the unknown vastness of water. The fear of staring down into the deep and realizing there's nothing but endless darkness below. Interestingly, it's not even an official medical condition. If you flip open the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the handbook psychologists use to diagnose mental disorders, you won't find thalassophobia listed there. It's more of a cultural term, a label people online have adopted to describe a very real, very intense reaction. In other words, you don't need a doctor's stamp to know what you're feeling. If your heart races at an image of the open sea, you already understand it. The word itself comes from the Greek thalassa, meaning sea, and phobos meaning fear. Fear of the sea. Straightforward enough. But what the word doesn't show is just how specific and strange this fear can be. People who have felt it will tell you it's not just being afraid of drowning. Drowning is a rational fear. It's based on a real, physical danger. But thalassophobia strikes even when there's no danger at all. Someone might be diving in clear water and suddenly feel their chest tighten when the seafloor drops away into a blue abyss. Or they're sitting at home, safe on the couch, and a picture of the Mariana Trench on Google Earth makes their heart skip a beat. Even video games can do it. Games like Subnautica are notorious for making their players fear parts of the deep water, even when it's not real. That's what makes the Lassophobia so unique. It's not about water itself. It's about what water hides. There are two main things fueling this. The first is the sheer amount of water. You see, the ocean is unimaginably huge, around 360 million square kilometers. Stand at the edge of it and it stretches past the horizon, dwarfing you instantly. That feeling of being so small compared to something so endless, our brains don't quite know what to do with it. This is part of the fear. You literally feel helpless to the raw size of what you're dealing with. Secondly is the darkness. The ocean's average depth is around 3.7 kilometers, and light only penetrates around 100 meters of that. Simply put, if you dive just a little too deep, everything goes dim and then completely black. Humans aren't born with a fear of the dark, but we do have a fear of the unknown. Since we have no idea what's down there, and trust me, there are things down there, it's not the warmest feeling to know you're floating just a couple hundred meters above. When you're floating on the surface, completely exposed, you'll know that whatever's lurking below will have a much easier time reaching you than you'll ever have escaping it. Whether it's a shark, a giant squid, or nothing at all. The fact you can't know is exactly the point. Our minds rush in to fill that void with possibilities, and usually, they aren't friendly ones. Psychologists say this fear isn't random. It comes from a mix of uncertainty, lack of control, and fear of the unseen. Humans like to see threats, to prepare for them, to plan a response. But in the ocean, you can't do all of this. You can't see, you can't predict, you can't fight. You're just a body drifting over something bigger than you, older than you, and completely out of your control. That's why thalassophobia is often compared to other primal fears like the fear of heights or claustrophobia. Heights expose us to open air with nothing to hold on to. Claustrophobia traps us in tight, airless spaces. But the ocean manages to combine both. It's wide open, but it also feels like a suffocating void. It's freedom and entrapment at the same time. You know when you're trying to run inside of a dream and you just don't really move. That's what it's like underwater. You punch slower, move slower, and the things that are designed to live in the water love to see something so helpless. 
and maybe that's why this fear is so unsettling. But that leaves us with the bigger question. If this fear shows up even when we're safe, then why do we react so strongly? Why does the thought of deep water make our hearts race, our skin crawl, our minds panic? What happened in the past with Homo sapiens that the triggers are still felt today? Mostly, when we talk about the reasons for thalassophobia, people's minds jump straight to monsters, the kinds of animals that could swallow a human whole. And it seems like it should make sense. Megalodons were the giant prehistoric sharks that could reach up to 60 feet long with teeth as big as your hand. Obviously, we'd be afraid of them. Or mosasaurs, over 50 feet long, with a crocodile-shaped head that you're definitely cooked if you run into one. Or something like this that doesn't even exist. But it doesn't really make sense that these animals would be the reason why we've evolved to have thalassophobia, because we humans have never actually lived alongside any of these animals. And definitely not this guy. He's not real. Trust me. Megalodons disappeared about 3.6 million years ago. Mosasaurs and plesiosaurs vanished 66 million years ago. And things like the Helicorpion went extinct roughly 250 million years ago. We've only been around for about 2.5 million years. The fear that these giants could swallow us just evolutionarily doesn't make sense. Humans didn't need to develop survival instincts for creatures they never encountered. So, if humans never actually encountered creatures like the Megalodon or Mosasaur, how did they come to fear the ocean so deeply? The answer isn't about prehistoric sea monsters, but about real, lived experience. For early humans, large bodies of water were dangerous. People drowned. Predators like crocodiles or aggressive fish lurked in rivers and shorelines. Even the best swimmers can't overpower a giant wave like an orca could. Over time, these dangers shaped how communities behaved. Parents warned children to stay away from deep water. Stories were told of things lurking beneath. And even if those stories weren't true, the fear they taught was useful. It kept people alive from the other real dangers of the ocean. Those who didn't fear the Kraken fell to the other dangers of the ocean, even if the Kraken wasn't real. Survival of the fittest becomes more survival of the fearful. Early humans couldn't have known that these creatures lived millions of years ago. They only knew that the ocean contained beings far beyond their understanding. And sure, early humans didn't know about extinction or ancient life, but when they stumbled upon a massive tooth or a strange vertebrae in the shoreline, something far bigger than any known animal even for their time, their minds filled in the blanks. Whether the creatures still existed or not didn't matter. The idea that something could be out there, hidden in the deep, only reinforced the instinct to keep away. And if you saw a fossil like this, you wouldn't take the chance either. But that still leaves a question. If the ocean is just dangerous in general, why is it specifically the deep water that triggers such intense fear? Because most people aren't terrified of shorelines, pools, or even boats. What gets under their skin is when the bottom drops out, when the seafloor vanishes into darkness, and when you're dangling above this. Unlike fears of monsters under the bed, our fear of the ocean isn't fully in our imagination. It's rooted in something much older. We've been exclusively land dwellers for hundreds of thousands of years. See, Homo sapiens first appeared around 200 to 300,000 years ago. And even before that, our hominin ancestors were creatures of grasslands and forests, not the open sea. We evolved to walk upright, to track prey across the savanna, to build fires on land not to navigate miles of open water. Unlike whales or dolphins, we never developed fins, gills, or sonar. The ocean has always been an alien world to us. To early humans, stepping into shallow water just means visiting the river. Deep water meant entering an environment where anything could happen to them. And it's not just drowning. Even the most skilled fishermen might have vanished at sea, swallowed by storms or dragged under by something lurking below. The further you are from shore, the less likely it is that you'll make it back. When you look down and see nothing, no rocks, no seafloor, literally no sense of depth, your brain instinctively knows something simple and terrifying. You're very far from land. Sure, it's the same ocean as shallow water, but in the middle of it, waves hit harder. The marine life changes. You won't find cute colorful fish out here, and you definitely aren't going to find another human. 
It's almost the opposite of claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is the fear of being trapped in tight space, crushed by walls closing in. Thalassophobia is trapped in the opposite, an endless void with no walls, no floor, and at the very same time, no escape. You're completely exposed. Over generations, evolution carved this simple truth into the mind. We were meant for land. The water was for other creatures, creatures faster, stronger, and far better equipped than us. The ocean is simply not our territory. Psychologists often point to survival instincts as the backbone of phobias. The ocean is dangerous in ways our ancestors couldn't control. Strong currents that pull you under, storms that can sink boats, predators lurking just beneath the surface. Our brains are hardwired to be cautious around environments that are unpredictable. If you lived 200,000 years ago and treated the ocean casually, you probably didn't live long enough to pass on your genes. But if you kept your distance, if you felt fear, that fear became your survival advantage. From an evolutionary psychology perspective, it makes sense that humans would develop an instinctive fear of deep water. Some scientists propose an even more intriguing idea, the notion of inherited memory. While this is still heavily debated, this concept suggests that modern humans might carry a biological memory of the dangers faced by our ancestors. The terror of deep, dark waters, of enormous predators just beyond sight, could be encoded into our DNA, surfacing as a phobia even when the threats themselves no longer exist. And it aligns eerily well with the way we react to images, movies, or games depicting oceans teeming with unseen dangers. This is where amygdala, the brain sphere center, steps in. The amygdala's job is simple, detect threats, real or imagined, and keep you alive. The thing is, it doesn't wait for proof. If something looks suspiciously vast, dark, or unknown, it sounds the alarm. The deep sea ticks all of these boxes. We can't see what's down there, we don't know what's lurking, and the amygdala responds by pumping out adrenaline, raising your heartbeat, and tightening your chest. You feel like you're in danger, even if you're just looking at a photograph of some deep water. Part of it is near primal instinct. This is where things like the Leviathan, the Kraken, the Scylla, and Caradis came from. Things that weren't actually real, but lessons in the form of a monster. And humans are storytellers. We're by far the best in the entire animal kingdom at sharing information. We don't just experience danger, we turn it into a myth. Fossils of giant marine reptiles only added fuel to the fire. And so, myths of sea serpents, leviathons, and water dragons were born. These stories spread, embedding the fear of the ocean deeper into our cultural DNA. Even today, ask someone about the ocean's depths and their first thought isn't plankton, not some fun glowy fish, but a giant, unseen beast waiting below. But science suggests it isn't just culture. There's also psychology at play. Humans suffer from what's called cognitive bias. Our brains tend to overestimate risks when they're uncertain. If you're standing on a cliff, you can see the danger. It's falling. If you're standing on a beach, looking out into the waves, the danger is less clear. Your brain fills the gaps with worst case scenarios. This bias is why aeroplane crashes terrify people more than car accidents, even though they're far less likely. And it's why the ocean, Vast, uncertain, unfamiliar, feels more dangerous than it often is. That's the somewhat scientifically accepted reason behind thalassophobia. Not just sharks or drowning, not just myths or fossils, but a deep, primal wiring that says, stay on land. Because for most of human history, the ocean wasn't a place of discovery. It was the place of no return. Thanks for watching. If you want to see a video about an animal that's not extinct and actually deadly, you can check out the world's most venomous little snail here.